Wonder Girl, issue 5, Joel Jones with Ad Adriana Milo on the art. Uh, so this is the first issue that jo Jones herself is not also doing the art, which is interesting. But uh, it, it feels like um, Milo is definitely copying. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll be honest, he's... I actually double-checked because I, I yeah. wrote down the, the names for the, all these books before I read this one because I read this mm -hmm. in the last batch. And when I went to look at the first couple of pages, I went, wait, are you sure this is not still Jones? And checked. I was like, oh, that is. Yeah, because yeah, oh. there's there's a couple <laughs> panels where the faces are a little bit wonky. And I was like, that's not like Jones. And then I went and double-checked. I was like, oh, this is uh, Mello, who it's, we're fans it, of. It, it's in there, terms uh, of the comparison of the style like matching that for a film yeah. issue it's about as perfect as you're ever it, it's definitely passing for jones a lot of the time just maybe yep. not quite as perfect but it's got the, yes. uh, do you know what i think it is that really sells it for me it's those heavy heavy thick inks yeah yep yeah so uh you know it's funny i remember we were a bit more lukewarm in the last issue of this it was kind of run out of steam because the plot was getting a little bit rushed and messier and like just not as co cohesive um and I'm still kind of feeling that to an extent. Like, there's stuff I like in this issue. There's, like, I, I felt like you ended this cliffhanger of, like, is, is she going to drink the drink to become, uh, like, indoctrinated, right? And obviously she decides not to, like, very early on in this. I kind of, yeah. and maybe it's the delays between issues where I've just sort of lost the feeling of this, the, the pacing of it. But it just kind of felt stilted to me, the way it just kind of quickly happens. And then we go into an action scene, like, almost, like, immediately. Yeah. But I feel like this is the Yara that we're familiar with. That she's just like, hey, you know what? A blonde second thought. I'm gonna dump this out in front of you guys. I, yeah. I still really like all the character stuff. I do think the story's a bit. Yeah. At this yeah. Point. No, I, I still like the character of Yara. I still like the decisions mm -hmm. she's made here. I, I think the way it built up to the decision last issue f felt weird because I didn't like that issue that much. I felt the way it kind of yeah. like just she seemed to like just accept things really easily, and then she's turning around and like d disregarding it here, which oh. is fine, but. She's... I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Th I don't think it earned us thinking she would even be tempted. No, I guess not at all. But I always took it as she's just bilking them for training to be Wonder Woman. You know, because she even asked, "Where's Chiron?" I guess. You know? yeah. uh... So I, I took that as she never really intended to do it because she likes Earth too much. And... I think if that's the case, I will critique the writing saying that I never got that idea enough. Uh... Gotcha. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Um, uh, I, don't, I, I, I also it, feel like, and Connor, I don't know if you agree, the Greek gods, the, the Olympians are a little bit off. Like, I feel like these aren't the Olympians. Like Hera feels on, but like Hephaestus and Eros, and they feel a little bit too, like, that's the word I'm looking for, not maniacal, but conniving, right? Mm, like I don't know. That feels kind of in line for me. Yeah. But even Hephaestus, just, just yeah. going off with Era, like and and being a monster that's swinging a hammer, like that felt a little bit off. Yeah, um, maybe. But you know, and I get why, because it seems like there's like the mascara and well, not the mascara, the Greek gods are making a a play on something, something bigger is going on. Yeah, do you, know, do you know I think part of the problem with this issue as well is is that it comes to Cassie, right? And she's it's basically too much Cassie. I thought it was too much Cassie. I don't have a problem with that. It's that basically she's talking about her time with Yara and like looking for mm -hmm. Yara and like maybe she's had a good influence on Artemis and whatever. But then she just kind of like is told in the scene what's just happened, what we've just seen happen in Olympus. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of like, but why are we hearing this again immediately? Like, why why did we why do we have to hear or find out this information? Because there's nothing interesting about her finding out. Fundamentally, because I think we we've, we've seen this before. Jones is not. The best writer. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's the answer. I I get. I get that's the answer. I'm just saying that you know, like I don't usually. No, I, I know. <laughs> like, it happens every time that there's a Jones book where it looks gorgeous, and she has great ideas. Mm -hmm. I think, but it doesn't quite know how to. She needs a script. co-writer. Yeah, I think a co-writer would really help, or, or or maybe just stronger editing. Yeah, yeah, maybe because it, um, it, just, it kind of felt like we just we cut to another scene only for a character to mostly learn something that we just literally read in the previous scene. And that's and that's what I meant by too much Cassie is like while all this is going on, it feels more like okay, we need to explain the Amazonian tribe more, and then have them explain everything. What, what, which was, like, it was fine. Well, no, when she when she starts talking to the the Brazilian mm -hmm. Amazon, that was fine because mm -hmm. it started to give us new information and was starting to contextualize mm -hmm. what they were. 
so that's that's fine i think um yeah and you see stuff with uh yara fighting you know the big god cloud in the sky yeah <laughs> uh which does look great admittedly you know it's, it's a pretty scene um but it's a little bit exposition but I, I do think learning more about the brazilian amazon tribe and the idea, yeah. what you thought there was only one like amazons like one strong woman clan like no yeah. there's there's more than one and i i did think there was some weird editorial choices in setting up mm-hmm. this place because mm. we see them fly in and there's a big caption mm-hmm. box you know as they're going in over to the place and you know it says akahim home, home of the amazons mm-hmm. right oh well, yeah known as the uh was it the Esquis- Esquisita? yeah Esquisita. Yeah. yeah and then so that's fine and then a few pages and then we cut away and we go back to olympus and you know do stuff like that and it's just yara fighting random and, right yeah. things. and this is fine and then we come back to cassie and the brazilian amazon and they say oh and it's again big uh you know location box city of akahim and then it's immediately going oh so this is akahim i'm like yeah, yeah i got that you've told me that twice already as a reader yeah you, you, you either should have kept that a mystery as to where we were mm-hmm. or put a you know, move that dialogue forward or done that on that double page splash on the way in yeah, had yeah. Her tell us that for the first time it, it felt so jarring to read yeah. it twice in a narration first and then have it in dialogue being explained to us as well mm-hmm. and the same page like literally it says city of uh, akaheim and mm-hmm. then this is akaheim <laughs> Like really, yeah. back like, and that's after we'd been introduced to like, it three or four pages ago as well. I, I, I'm okay with them reiterating the name because it is a new name for us. We have to learn that, like you know, if you just say it once, it's not enough to really settle in. But like having it right next to each other twice in the same page is is definitely mm-hmm. clunky to me. And it's uh, it's for me it's, it's for me it's the introduction of it being after the other two instances. And I, I think as I'm looking at the issue again, like I am I, even more so than when I read it, like I'm really noticing just how kind of throwaway a lot of the fighting that Yara's doing is. Like it's just, it just yeah. cuts back to her for like three or four pages fighting something uh, from Olympus. And most of it just feels like this is just kind of like pretty art fighting for the sake of it. There's not really a whole lot happening story wise progression. I, I was really just like, it ends on that big, you know, it's like, oh, you killed Jerry. And then immediately it's just yeah. like, right, carry on fighting. <laughs> And then Jerry's never mentioned again. I just no. uh, let me make a person right. You killed Jerry. Just someone <laughs> killed Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> What's that? Uh, and the, the end of the issue. I, I do like that they're bringing in Donna Troy because that's the reveal is that Donna Troy is already mm-hmm. there for Cassie to meet. And I'm like, okay, literally all the Wonder Girls are in this book now. That's kind of neat. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I have to admit the actual progression of the story in this. It felt like the Cassie stuff was the more important mm-hmm. uh, part of the book. And all of Yara's stuff, other than turning down the goblet at the start, like, it was just random fighting uh, yeah. constantly. I'm a little bit hopeful, because they, they talk about how, yeah, once Yara's returned, we're going to march on Themyscira. That feels like it's going to tie into that, yeah. all that stuff coming up. And maybe that'll yeah. give it some much-needed direction, which it's kind of felt mm-hmm. aimless. And it, it's kind of weird that it already feels like that with issue four and five. Like, it's four and five. Yeah. You're selling your first arc. Like, why does it yeah, feel like this? It felt like they, they were introducing the character and setting up, but then they were like, okay, we've got this story coming up. We kind of need to spin the wheels until we get there. And, it, and there wasn't a good story to... Kind of. Which which is maybe a fault of the of again of Jill Jones writing is that a better writer would think of a two or three issue like little story that would maybe like give her a nice little arc, maybe a nice little story to just sort of really interest us to Yara and how she thinks. I think that's one of the other problems with this book is while I like seeing Cass and you know Donna now, uh, you know I like these characters. I do think the first handful of issues should have focused on Yara more. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what sold us on this book was was that two issue story, Yara. which was just Yara, and it was just which like, is still fantastic. Yeah, right. So some of the you know play with the Brazilian folklore type of stuff too, because that kind of lays the foundation for this lost tribe of Amazonians, right? Like, which I, you know, I, yeah, I think all the Olympus stuff like probably came into it soon. It should have been focused yeah. maybe more on just like defining Yara and defining the tribe she came from, and then start bringing in mm-hmm. the other parts to interfere mm-hmm. with it. I wonder if you know we're saying, oh, you know, Jones got like not quite got the direction, not quite maybe got the the writing chops. This I wonder if this is maybe not quite her fault, maybe. in the sense yeah. that maybe editorial have said we're doing this crossover event. You need to have this stuff set up by then. Yeah. So that's kind of why we haven't got this kind of first arc of Yara yeah. like we're kind of asking for. Yeah. 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 It may not really be her fault. Uh. It... <sighs> It's really I tough do think to judge. more seasoned writers could handle it better and well, have handled but it better. But it is telling to me that, you know, like, this was, like, super exciting to get into because that Future State issue, or two issues, yeah. was really good. And the first issue of this, I still think, was pretty solid. Like, it still did a lot of things mm-hmm. I liked in that first one or two issues, but 
it very quickly started to feel like it was just, yeah, like spinning its wheels and, yeah, just being a bit I muddy in its storytelling. I still don't understand why Yara is so important to the Greeks when they have yeah. literally any other Amazons to pull from, like even even Artemis and her band of the band of McDonald. Why, it, it feels why like, is Yara so important? It does feel like there's a reason. It just feels that we're not getting to it because we're not yeah. going to do that story until after the crossover. Or maybe it's a part of the crossover. But right. either way, we're not getting to it yet because of that. Right. Yeah. But like, I would like to have a little bit of like even a, a tease of why because it's not like she's the only demigod that's that's you know it reeks of a, amazon it reeks of like a tv show where they've got a good overall idea and there's like part of it's like a mystery of what's going on but they're not actually like they don't do a good job of actually making the stories compelling that are building up yeah. to when we eventually get the mystery so you end up just waiting around for like the good part and that's a sign of yeah it's a sign of bad writing unfortunately and i think yeah. Jones that's, here is struggling with the just the issue to issue actually having a compelling yeah. story. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'll lately still read issue six, and if if it's going to cross over with the other other wonder books, and I'm reading them oh. anyway, then it makes more sense to sort of. But it's going to be telling that when that crossover is done, if any of us still want to read Wonder Girl, I, I suspect I will probably read it after the crossover to see if it can. Yeah. Because during the crossover, even if it's not amazing, it'll be like, well, you're doing crossover stuff. This might right. not be your fault, right? <laughs> but uh, it's, it's kind of sad at that point where we're getting to issue like 10 or whatever. And like, mm -hmm. we still keep saying, this is not great, but it might not be her fault. <laughs> yeah. I think after that, we'll be, okay, you've got an issue maybe two to prove that you've got a direction for the book yeah. and you, you've got something to, to do with it. And, and to be fair, it may still be very true. It may not be her fault. But even if we're still having to sort of question that, at a certain point, it doesn't it matter. If, point where it doesn't matter if it's not a fault. Yeah, it, it's just not good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, you're going to stop. Uh, so yep. that's unfortunate. Uh, but okay, there you go. Wonder Girl issue five. What are you giving it, Matt? Uh, six point five. Car. Okay. I'm going to give yet another six. A lot of it because the art is still really nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to go yeah. with five point five. Just because, yeah, I felt really frustrated with this, uh, especially even, I actually think it went down a little bit as I was looking through it as we were talking about it. I was like, you know what, I'm actually more annoyed at this now looking back at it because I'm realizing how much of it was just fluff. So, That, yeah. that page, though, where the, the one, uh, Lost Tribe, she's like, we're going to march on Themyscira. That whole just Cassie looking butterfly, just the way mm. it's proportioned out. That looks great, you know. Yeah, so if they're matching on Themyscira and this, like, you know, new mm -hmm. group that's introduced in the Wonder mm -hmm. Woman annual are going to, like, what, attack Themyscira, like, yeah, mm -hmm. like, like, you can see all this converging, maybe, yeah. uh, big, big conflict. Yeah.